we've got a force pulling on a mass and there, there has a spring and it has a damper. So drawing our free body diagram um, for this system, we have F going to the right and then we would have um, the spring force, which pulls to the left, because that spring is trying to pull the opposite direction. And then we have this damping force also pulling to the left. So drawing our diagram in here, we have F pulling to the right. And then we have um, we'll, we can call this FB and FK for the spring and the damper. And the motion here is happening in the X direction. Now the spring force formula is KX. So the spring constant times the change in length. And here we're assuming that it starts at X equals zero. Um, otherwise, you would have a delta X in there. And then the damping force, um, damping is proportional to velocity. So the damping force is B, that damping coefficient, times X dot. So step one was to get the free body diagram. And now we have to actually derive the equations from it. So we will say that sum of the forces in X equals mass times acceleration. Okay, just that standard Newton's second law. So we also know that acceleration in the x direction is x double dot, the second derivative. So if x is position, x dot is velocity, x double dot is acceleration. And then on the right side of the equation, we just put in all these forces. So pulling in the positive direction, we have that applied force F. Pulling in the negative direction, we've got this damper force and the spring force. So that is B X dot and K X. So we can rearrange this now and get F on one side and the X stuff on the other side. So we'll have m x double dot plus b x dot plus k x equals f. And right now, this is written as functions of time because the dot, the double dot, those are functions of time. But the, now that it's in the time domain, in order to find the transfer function and do the math, we have to convert to frequency domain. So we will use the knowledge that S is D DT. And then we also know that S squared is the second derivative equals D squared DT squared. And we can apply those principles to this equation. So if we rewrite it up here, M, x double dot plus b x dot plus k x equals f. And so then we'll have m. And instead of x double dot, we have the s squared times x of s. And usually the frequency domain uses capital letters. A lot of times the time domain will use lowercase letters. It just is a way to help distinguish. So this x of s is x as a function of s that is not times on inside of those parentheses. So we have m times s squared times x of s. And then plus b times s times x of s. And then plus k. And this x doesn't have a derivative. So that's just k times x of s equals, and the f gets transformed to, just becomes f of s instead of f of t like it was before. So now we need to extract the x and we'll get um, x of s. We'll pull that out from the rest of these. 
and write everything that it was times. So we have ms squared plus bs plus k equals f of s. And now finally, the transfer function equals the output over the input. And here, our input was a force because the force is what we are personally doing is pulling on this. And then the output is the position that results from that pulling force. So the output over the input is going to be the x of s over the f of s. And then basically, we just move this f to the other side in division. We move this um, item in the brackets to the other side, and it's going to become in the denominator. So we get 1 over ms squared plus bs plus k. So this is the transfer function for the mass spring damper system. Okay, so what we did here, step one, was the free body diagram. Um, we already had a coordinate frame that was given on here, so we didn't have to define that. Um, step two was get the equations in the time domain. Step three here was convert to frequency domain. And then finally, step four was rearrange to get the transfer function.